Okay, so in this video we're going to practice doing a titration, starting with cleaning of the equipment and then performing the titration. So cleaning is very important and we have to follow some proper steps first. Um, usually what we do is we clean everything with distilled water at least twice. I'm going to do it once for this video. So I'm just going to put some distilled water through the pipette, um, make sure it's gone all the way down, put it through the other end as well. There we go. Also going to wash our burette. Now with washing the burette, I'm going to make sure that the stopcock is closed so that um, water can't come out. I'm going to put some water inside. Then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to twirl it, twist it towards the sink. Um, keep twirling it and that coats the inside of it and gets out any contaminants that might be in there. You can move it if you need to. Okay. I'm also going to give my conical flask a rinse. Um, just in case. There we go. Okay, now, after rinsing with distilled water, very important that we rinse with what we're gonna use that piece of equipment for. Conical flask doesn't matter, we're just gonna leave that for later. With my pipette, I'm gonna use this to transfer some acid, some hydrochloric acid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my, my bauble and I'm gonna suck up some hydrochloric acid. It's meant to be 0.1 molar, but I made that using measuring cylinders, so it's probably not very accurate. So our titration is going to test that, whether it's actually 0.1 or not. So I've sucked up a little bit, just a little bit. I'm going to take the bauble off. Remember the best way to take it off is to twist it off so you don't break the pipette. And I'm going to do the same thing before where I'm going to twist it and move it across and coat the inside of the glassware with the hydrochloric acid. I'm going to go all the way to the end of the pipette just to make sure I've got all the water out. Because the problem is if there's any distilled water left in there, um, it's going to change the concentration of our sample that we're moving. Now remember, we always put the pipette lying down on the bench without the bauble. We're going to do the same thing with our um, burette. I'm just going to make sure there's nothing left inside the little end bit. I'm going to shut it again. Um, and in order to fill up some into the burette, I'm going to use a funnel. I'm not trying to pour it directly in. So just a little bit, you don't need a lot. Oh, I might put a little bit more. So same thing again, take it and slowly twist it, lower it, coating the inside of the burette. And it's best to do this next to a sink so that in case anything spills out the other side, it spills out into the sink. I'm just going to also make sure I rinse that little bit inside um, past the stopcock, make sure that it's been rinsed with sodium hydroxide as well, and then I'm going to just tip the rest down. Okay, so now we're going to fill up our burette with um, our sodium hydroxide. It doesn't really matter if sodium hydroxide is in the burette or the conical flask, but it's better to put your unknown in the conical flask, and our, no our unknown is going to be our hydrochloric acid because I am much more certain that this sodium hydroxide is 0.1 molar than I am of my hydrochloric acid. Um, so I'm gonna put a funnel into the burette. I'm gonna make sure that this is shut. Yes, I'm gonna still put a little waste beaker underneath just in case. And then I'm gonna fill up my sodium hydroxide. Now, as I'm filling up, I wanna be really careful um, that I don't overfill it because otherwise it will spill out the top. Um, so I'm gonna fill up my sodium hydroxide. Oh, some dripping. Now remember, you don't have to go to zero. So I'm a little bit below zero, but that's fine. I'm just going to clean up this mess that I made. Did any of it get into the acid? There we go. Um, and what I am going to do is I'm going to get rid of that funnel. Um, and I'm going to make sure that I know exactly where um, I'm starting off with for my initial height of value. At the moment, I'm not eye level, and so I'm going to bring the burette down, look at it at eye level, um, and have a look. I'm actually just going to empty out a little bit just to, to please myself. I'm going to go down to one mil. Yep, there we go. So I'm starting off at one mil. Um, Our uh, height of value, uh, remember we read from zero to 50, and so we read from the bottom of the meniscus. Actually, this is sitting a little bit above one. 
um, but that's okay because I'm gonna get rid of a tiny drop before we start um, so uh, starting off at about one okay so now that we've got the burette ready we need to get our acid into our conical flask so I'm gonna take my pipette um, and I rinsed, I rinsed it, yes, yes, I rinsed it um, with acid, so I'm going to take out my sample. So when I'm taking out the sample, um, I'm going to want my pipette calibration mark to be at eye level. I'm going to press the suck button to get the acid up, and I'm going to want to go past the calibration mark a little bit. Okay, so I'm going past the calibration mark. I'm taking this out. I'm getting my waste beaker ready. And I'm going to take a piece of paper towel. Because the idea is that we've got some now on the outside. So I'm wiping the, any excess off the outside. I'm going to put it into my waste beaker. Um, and now I want to drop it down so that the meniscus is on the calibration mark. If any air bubbles come into this, just um, tap them out or um, expel the liquid and, and try again. So I'm going to drop it down, oh too much, that's alright, so if that happens you just have to go back and get some more acid and do the same step as before, so going back up, it's very important to go over the line and back because that way you get a nice meniscus, if you just suck up to the line you won't get the meniscus form, so very gently, oh there we go, perfect, so I'm going to put it into my conical flask. I need to make sure I transfer all of it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the tip of the pipette to the conical flask so it's touching it but at a bit of an angle and as I expel the liquid it's going down into the bottom of the conical flask. There was a little bit of water left over in the conical flask, that's okay because the idea is I'm putting a certain number of moles of the hydrochloric acid into the conical flask and if I've got some water in there that's not going to change the number of moles, it's just going to change the concentration. Um, but the whole point of the titration is seeing how many moles is going to react with the amount of moles of sodium hydroxide. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to wipe the outside again. I'm going to take my bauble off by twisting it. I'm going to lay it back down. So, now that I've got my acid in here, I'm almost ready to go. Um, we're doing an acid-based titration, which means in order to see the endpoint of the reaction, I'm going to need an indicator. I'm using phenylphthalein. I'm only going to put about two drops of phenylphthalein. Don't want to put too much. Um, one, two, well, about three, that one. Give it a bit of a swell. It's nice and colourless. That's a good sign. It means that I'm in acidic conditions rather than basic conditions. And so now I'm ready to start my titration. So, uh, the best technique when doing the titration is have your dominant hand on the stopcock um, and, that, and your other hand on the conical flask. And that means that you can easily swell while controlling how much goes in. Um, the very first one is known as the rough titer because we're still getting an idea of whereabouts um, we're going to be getting our titer value. Now I'm expecting about a one-to-one -one ratio so about 20 mils to 20 mils um, but it might not be the case so I'm probably going to put in a lot going up to about 19 and then slow down a bit. So. Because it's the rough one, I can put in a lot more. I can see it's starting to turn pink a bit, so I'm going to just give it a bit of a shake. Remember, in order to find, um, oh, I've got a bit of a drop, do you want to bring it closer? So as you can see on the side, um, there are some, or you might be able to see there are some pink drops. Um, that means that there's probably some on the outside, or sorry, on the inside, on the glass. So the best thing to do in this case is to take our distilled water and just rinse around and that makes sure that all the moles are going down into the reactant. Remember it doesn't matter if we add more distilled water to it. Okay, so I'm going to get close up on here, that way we can see the pink. Um, the reason we use the white tile is so that we can see that colour change. Oh, oh wow, too much. Oh. And we're looking for that first permanent colour change. So that first permanent colour change is usually when you swirl it for 10 seconds and it doesn't disappear. This looks like it's not disappearing. It's a little bit darker than what I would have wanted, but that's okay. 
Um, and when we have a look back at our um, burette, um, we see that, whoa, where is it? It's sitting at about 13.8, maybe 13.85. It's a bit hard to tell on the video. Uh, me looking at it, it's about 13.8. Um, and so that way I can work out my tighter value for this. It was a bit less than what I was expecting, but that's okay. Okay, so we normally don't only do one titration. Um, so to be more precise, we do uh, several. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my contents down the sink. I'm gonna rinse it with just normal water. <coughs> and then I'm gonna rinse it with distilled water again, with my lots of supply of distilled water, because I wanna make sure it's nice and clean. Um, and then I'm gonna add some more hydrochloric acid um, and do another titration. I probably also want to refill my burette just in case. Having a look at it, I probably have enough for one more titration. Um, if you weren't sure, or if you were hitting around the 20 mil mark, you'd want to refill it. I'm going to leave it for now, it should be okay. Um, so I'm going to refill my acid. flask ready to go. Oops, that might have been a bit too much. Swirl it around, get the paper out of the way. And I'm gonna go again. So this time I'm starting at, uh, same as before, at 13.8. So I can approximate there's gonna be around 13 um, mils. So I'm probably gonna put 10 mils to start with really fast and then um, go really slow from there. So now that I've gotten a lot closer, um, I want to just do a little bit at a time. I don't really want to go over. I want a really nice pale pink color. So now I'm only putting a few drops in because um, I'm trying to get it as close to pale pink as possible. Do you want to bring it here and zoom in and we can see it like drop by drop kind of thing. Let me move this up a little bit. As we get closer and closer, we're even going to want to do just half a drop. Oh wow, so that is really nice pale pink but it's disappeared really quickly so I'm gonna to want to put only half a drop to do half a drop um, we need to really carefully open it only a little bit as the drop forms we're gonna shut the stopcock wait for it there we go I'm gonna put that drop to the edge of the conical flask and with the distilled water I'm gonna wash that in Now, didn't make too much of a difference, so I'm going to do maybe one more drop. Oh, see, that's a nice pale one again, but I've got half a drop already on there, so I'm going to add that half a drop. And if you keep it on there, see, now we've got a nice, really pale pink colour. I'm going to let that sit for a few seconds. It's still nice and really pale. It's not disappearing straight away. So I would say that actually is good to go. Let's have a look. So you can really see um, it's, it's got a bit of a pale pink. Um, and we finished off on about 25.1 approximately. Where is it? I don't know. There we go. 25.1. Um, and just to show the difference, I'm going to put in one more drop. Oh, that was two, two drops. That's all right. Um, but already you can see now it's a lot more distinct pink. If I put that last drop in, 
that, that's too, it's not that it's too much pink, but it's pinker than what we'd like. Whereas that first time when I stopped it, it was a nice really pale pink. And just for fun, let's put some more in. Yeah, so now we're getting really pink. And then probably stuff like this is, is definitely too far. Whoop. And I'm trying to get it really bright pink. It's not working, but that, oh actually, yeah, that's pretty bright pink. That's what we definitely do not want. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped with um, reminding you guys how to perform a titration and we're gonna have a practice go over ourselves in class.